Hello guys, what's up? It's Z Michael Lennon 27. I have been taking an actual big break from doing videos and now I am back. And today I am reviewing Lucy, the new uh, Scarlett Johansson film that came out July 25th. Um, I actually saw it in this uh, new RPX experience, which is presented Regal. So I'm going to be talking about the RPX experience, which is like the IMAX version, and we're talking about the film as well. But let's just talk about what's the film about, first off. So the film is about a woman named Lucy, who kind of gets involved in this like mobster situation, when she has to export drugs that's been forcibly put into her stomach. And what happens is, after she gets attacked, and the bag starts open, the bag opens up, and this drug actually allows her to use more than 10% of her brain. And what happens is she starts to use more and more. So she uses like 10, then she starts at 20, and then 30, and it starts to evolve more and more. And basically the story, to, and the concept of this idea is, what would happen if she reached 100% of her brain? What, what could she do? And what is, what is she allowed to do? And that's what the movie goes with. Now, I'm not, I'm gonna, first I want to talk about this RPX experience. Which is basically this regal like type of IMAX noise. So let's just talk about it right away. Um, I saw this actually with my brother and my father. So thanks to him for that seeing us see it. But first off, is the experience is actually kind of cool. It's a lot like IMAX, like I said. And um, what's it has like the speakers and it has like a gigantic. It has a big screen. And we were sitting like in the middle seat row, and it looks really good. There's a lot of like clear sound, like clear sound and like clear visuals. So, it's kind of a cool little thing, uh, our big experience. It's not as like expensive as like IMAX 3D, or IMAX itself, but it's okay to me. R RPX is a solid way of seeing Lucy, but you would see Lucy, not in IMAX, you would have to see it, but I give it an okay, it's a solid go. So, what's that actually about? How much, how long is it? Well, it's actually uh, 90 minutes actually, and in case you guys not know who directed it or wrote this film, it's actually done by Luc Besson. He's actually a French director, I think, or something like that. I'm just going by the name. But this guy, he directed films like um, The Fifth Element. He also did the film The Family, Leon the Professional, Left Man Nikita, I believe it's called, and a few other films he has done. He's also been a producer of the Transporter series with Jason Statham and the Taken series with Liam Neeson. So he actually has a good agenda of films, and this is like his like next film to do a directing. And it's like kind of like. So Johansson's here, and she's kind of like boosting up his like career. So how is the film overall? Overall, the film is actually good. It's actually good. It isn't bad or outstanding. It's not the best film out there. It has a great concept, but in my opinion, the film is overall solid, but it suffers. Let's let's. I want to talk about why, but I'm not gonna go into that yet. I'm gonna go into it later at the end of the review. So. How are we, let's talk about performances first. So we're going to talk about Scarlett Johansson, and she's the main star. She is like the main character of the film. Let's talk about Scarlett Johansson. She does actually a great job. She um, really takes the role really, uh, well. She starts off as a girl who just wants to get her date through. She has to like to do studying for an exam and all. She lives with her roommate and all that. But then as the film evolves and she gets the medicine to her system, she starts to change. You can see that sometimes when you have more brain intelligence, she's 20%, 30%. You begin to lose your humanity, and she gets colder, a lot more meaner as the film progresses toward its conclusion. And her performance overall is actually really well done. You really see her transform as to not just a human being, but to someone else entirely, or something, or like an entity in some ways. As in the film, she gets powers, as for some reason, when you use more than 10% of your brain, your brain starts to predict powers, you can feel the life sources of every single thing around you, like trees, you can tell that someone has like kidney cancer, or they're gonna get kidney cancer, or they need a transplant or medication, or you can tell when something's gonna happen, or you can time travel and all. Now, I'm okay with that. I mean, I, I'm not asking for a realistic film. I mean, this is a, a science fiction film, so it's like the fiction of science. So, I'm okay with the fact that it's going all balls out crazy with these superpowers that Lucy can do and everything. It's actually kind of cool. It doesn't really bother me. So, reviewers she was saying, Oh, the fact that you can use more 10% of your brain and you get powers is ridiculous. It's a science fiction film. Get over it. Um, overall, like, the layout, um, the pacing of the film isn't really uh, bad either. I mean, it starts off really quickly. Then there's, like, a shooting scene. Like, not a shooting scene, but there's, like, a murder scene in the beginning. And then, like, continues, like, this, like, 
back and forth parallel type of little story with her and Morgan Freeman's character, who's a professor, and he is basically like do, been doing research for twenty years about how we can use more than ten percent of our brains and all. So he's kind of plays as an exposition for Scarlett Johansson to kind of like talk to. And to be honest, I always liked Morgan Freeman as an actor, and he does a good job here. But I feel like he wasn't given enough to do in the film. I mean, he just like really just talks about how he's been doing like research in all these years. He's gotten nowhere with this research. And it's kind of getting stuck, like, nowhere. Uh, and I still think he does a good job and all, but I just feel like he could have done more. He could have actually had some type of momentum or had some something to do in this one, other than just be surprised and be like, I don't know what's going on with this one, if she's on the truth or not. And then um, the action, actually. There's some good action scenes here. There's, like, a cool action scene at the ending, and there's, like, this cool action scene where... Um, I don't want to spoil too much, but there's a hospital scene where Lucy, um, she uses like 50% of her brain, actually. And she starts to use like these crazy powers. I'm not going to spoil what happens, but her powers get out of control, basically. And she starts going and doing crazy shit. And it's really actually um, funny at times. There's some little jokes here and there, a little bit of humor. I don't actually like that. It's not like bad humor. I mean, like, trust me, I know bad humor. But it's a more solid humor. So, and the visual effects, when there's visual effects happening in the film... It's actually really well, like, good at science. I didn't, like, um, for a film this cheap, it only cost $40 million. It, um, it doesn't really, um, have any bad visual effects, especially at the ending, when they use a lot of visual effects. Um, and that's, like, really a lot of the good. I mean, that's the Scar Johansson performance, the visual effects, the fights and action scenes, when they're there. The concept itself is just downright ridiculously awesome. I actually like the idea of that. She can just basically, like, look around, and she can, like, go into people's minds and like predict who if they're good or bad if they're gonna do something bad in like five seconds that's cool I like that now let's go into the things I didn't like about the film the first thing has to be kind of of the fact that the villain is just a stereotypical villain who's the mob boss he wants his drugs back big deal he's actually played by Twink Min Soy if you have not known he was actually in the original old boy. He was the man who got captured for 15 years and he got released. If you haven't seen the original old boy, check that out. Um, he played the villain and, well, I can't really say anything really about his performance because he doesn't really speak English in the film. He speaks all, like, Japanese or Chinese or Koreanese. I don't really know. But whatever. But his his performance is okay. But his villain itself is a downright plan and forgettable. He's not the best villain of all time. He's memorable. He doesn't really have any motives or really he just wants his drugs back because this woman is killing all his men or knocking his men out or freezing his men or doing something to his men. And he just wants his drugs back, basically. So that's what he's really after, drugs. So overall, the, his bland like character of villainy is a little too much to handle at times and I didn't really like that. He, I wish they could actually have done something with his villain or something like that. Maybe try, I mean. I mean, come on, I should expect something a little bit more than that. And also the biggest flaw for me, personally, was the last 10 minutes. Those last 10 minutes kind of got me upset because the actual ending of the film. I'm not going to spoil it, but the film definitely loses control of itself, especially in the third act. When the fast 5 to 10 minutes roll up, when those 10 minutes show up, it starts losing control of itself. Basically, I can't really say what happens, but something happens to Lucy, she does something, and the film just kind of loses control after that, and it never gets its, gets control of itself. It's like as if the film starts going into the woods, in the dark woods, and you're just watching it bobble its head, and you can't do nothing to bring it back to you, because it's just going to be walking away. It's like that person that just ignores you and doesn't give a damn. In some ways, that may be cool for some interactions of what happens in the ending, but for me, it wasn't clear at all, and it really pissed me off. I was, I, I wasn't upset. Like I was like, oh, I'm a refund back. But I feel like the ending didn't really serve purpose or did itself justice at all, really. So to say the entire film is bad, no, it's not. It's actually just the ending that kind of falls apart, and it's just like it, it has too much weight on itself, and it just breaks. And that's how I feel about the film overall is that at times it's a great concept and it delivers but at other times it's just bland, cheesy, and forgettable. That's what I think of it overall. So I will say that 
it, it, it may not be the smartest idea out there, but it was one that people would be asking themselves, what can we do with more than 10% of our brain? And the film does satisfy, but it doesn't do anything else the other than just satisfy. It's kind of like it's just it's trying to reach the minimum amount of satisfaction for those audiences out there. And I have to feel like I wasn't really fully satisfied. I was kind of disappointed, but overall, the film finished itself. I left, and I was just like, oh, okay, I got a solid film. It wasn't amazing. It wasn't other garbage, but it wasn't anything special either. The concept's special, but that's it. I mean, it's, Johansson's performance is good overall, and that's really it for me. For my final verdict of this film, I'm going to do a little wrap this up real quickly. I'm going to have to give this film an overall score of, uh... Well, the ending really pissed me off a little, a lot, really. So I'm going to have to give it an overall score of a 7.5 out of 10. It's not a bad film or anything necessary. And I still say check it out. I don't think it's like, must see, like, go see on day one. But it's really, it's not like, must see on day one. But if you did, good for you. I mean, you saw a uh, intriguing film for you. But for me, it's hard to really say... Um, but this is like a few weeks old, this review. Well, I mean, the film's been out for a few weeks now, so. Is it worth seeing? Yes. Is it worth seeing on the first day? Yes. Is it, like, the best film out there? No, it's not. I mean, there's other films out there that I think are amazing and outstanding. But this film is not really outstanding. It's just good. And that's just, like, passable, in my opinion. So, a 7.5 out of 10, I'm going to give this film... I'm going to be as nice as possible because I didn't really want to like get like go angry out, throw stuff and break crap because I don't want to do that because my stuff is valuable. So 7 out of 0.5 out of 10, 7.5 out of 10. Um, I really was a little bit disappointed but overall I was satisfied. So that's good for me. So please like the video, comment below and subscribe. And, um, also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. My name on Facebook is Michael Martinez. My name on Twitter is the Michael in 1987. You can follow me there. You can ask me com questions and comments about what, what I'm, if I'm doing videos at that time, when we're doing the videos, and when we're sending them up at all. You can ask me questions there. Um, of course, my other reviews, I'll be reviewing Hercules. Um, I'll also be trying to do a review of Purge Anarchy. Um, I'll try to do a review of Sniper Elite 3. And it's really low chance of me doing Transformers Inter Extinction review, which I really want to do. But I just did not have the right time, or I just took my break, and I just couldn't do it. So sorry about that, guys. I'm be trying to do like, all these reviews. Up. Also, to review the Walking Dead and the Ruins review. So let's have all this stuff laying on me. So let's just hope I can do this stuff, guys. So bye, guys. Please actually watch this video and give it a thumbs up, please. It really does help me out. I don't know how it helps me out. It just helps me. Out. I've been on this like like I've been doing YouTube since 2011. I don't know what happens when you press the like button. Comment if you do know what happens, but that's all. So, bye, guys.